welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more so today we have uh, water purification uh, on a large scale and small scale so we know how we drink water on a uh, house setup if we don't have a well or a bow well setup we depend on the municipal or corporation water supply so how we get this uh, from municipal water supply means we get uh, a pipe connection or there will be a centralized pipe connection which goes through every uh, lane or every road and it goes to the every house thereby we get water so it is uh, very important to maintain the quality of water because it is a centralized supply if anything goes wrong it will affect a lot of people so let's see how uh, a large scale water is getting purified so commonly if we have a centralized supply the first process will be purification of water so let's see in detail about the purification of water on large scale so we know that if there's no water no life no blue no green and uh, we have a water pollution law which was uh, came into existence in 1974 so that was just a part of introduction Okay, so today we are seeing both large scale and small scale. So small scale is a very uh, simple uh, household purification or disinfection of well. But uh, the important one, the complex, the more laborious uh, thing is large scale water purification. It has basically three steps. That is the storage, second one the filtration and the third part is disinfection. So the storage part is uh, like uh, we collect water from the river uh, or a uh, lake or any common sources we collect uh, through pipe system and uh, we collect at a common area where this uh, water is getting purified or we say water treatment plant the second part is filtration so we have two types of filters that is slow sand filters and rapid sand filters slow sand filters were uh, primitive types uh, nowadays it is not commonly used because it needs a large uh, area uh, it requires a very large area because uh, it is uh, working by a principle of biological action uh, we don't add any chemicals in slow sand filters so the gravity type uh, action is having uh, it filters through the water bed or the filter bed and get purified so it requires very large amount of uh, area because uh, we are dealing with water purification for a very big population so nowadays we use rapid sand filters that involves uh, chemical actions because uh, it doesn't need a storage basically this storage works with slow sand filters and rapid sand there is no need of storage we can directly treat the uh, raw water from the river or lake or pond whatever so nowadays rapid sand filters are very common because uh, it can uh, work 24 7 but slow sand filters need to be stopped once the filter bed is clogged or if it loses its efficiency and the last part is disinfection we usually do with chlorine so let's see what is small scale purification we'll deal it uh, later that is like a boiling uh, chemical disinfection using bleaching powder chlorine or hth tablets iodine potassium permanganate and how to disinfect a well that is by using bleaching powder and double port method this commonly we do at our house so let's see about storage so storage uh, we can use a natural or artificial reservoirs so what is the effect of storage it has physical chemical and biological action physical means 90 percentage of its impurities will be settled there will be oxidizing action uh, and biological the 10 percentage of bacteria remains at the end of one week but the optimum period is two weeks if we keep more than two weeks there will be production of algae so that will be a problem so maximum we can keep it for two weeks 
so it is commonly seen in biological filters so the first part is storage so now we are moving to filtration okay so how water is getting filtered filter we have slow sand and rapid sand this is biological and mechanical so slow sand filters are started in 19th century in Scotland so basically it has a filter box and a filter controlling valves filter box has supernatant water sand pit and under drainage system it looks like this this is a filter box a cross-sectional or diagrammatic picture so there is um, raw water in inlet so water goes through here so this is a biological layer or schmutzdecke formation so water will be here and it will get filtered through here this is a sand pit and there will be filter controlling valves at the bottom so it goes uh, out through here okay so this is a diagrammatic representation of biological filters so this is a vital part schmutzdecke or biological layer so it forms biologically we are not creating it once the sand bed is laid it forms automatically at uh, one or two weeks so that biological layer is the part which actually uh, do the filtration process okay so this is what i was saying it needs a very large area you can see how big it is the slow sand or biological filters so it needs very big area so each uh, one is a filter bed so it has a filter bed just you can see this is a uh, water filter bed the all these were similar ones so these sands were uh, like after a few weeks it will go useless so we need to remove the top layer of this sand and mm, we need to replace it with new sand then we have to keep it for one or two weeks to uh, get formation of that particular biological or zooglial layer so we need to have many uh, similar types at the same time because once efficiency is lost we need to drain the water and we need to replace the sand bed but water has to be filtered because it has to go for the uh, central supply and to houses so we need to keep uh, many uh, similar plants at the same time so it requires very large area but in uh, rapid sand uh, there is no need of storage or this type of um, big land area so let's see more detail about the uh, filter bed or the biological filters there is a what water there is sand bed then there will be gravels there is uh, perforated pipes through which the water is collected and it goes to the main central supply so it is a cross section the top layer will be very minute uh, sand then there will be coarse sand then there will be fine gravel and there will be coarse gravel and between this pipe so since it is a cross section it looks like this so water collected through these pipes to the outer okay so we have supernatant water sand bed under drainage system and walls so these are the four components of a filter bed so this is i was talking about after a period of time uh, this entire plant will go useless because it loses its efficiency this the heaps of sand what you are seeing is uh, the top layer of uh, unused or the not used plants because after a while it loses its efficiency so what we do is we scrape off the top layer and remove it off because it was biological layer and it can't be used for a very long time so after few weeks it has to be replaced because it loses its efficiency so meanwhile you have to drain the water and you have to keep remove this and you have to keep a new sand because it already loses its height so we have to add new sand and wait for this top layer to become biological layer because it forms biological layer by uh, growing algae and plankton over it so that uh, act as a filter in biological filters so basically the supernatant water will be 1 to 1.5 meter 
so this is a waterless plant so this is a water plant so i was talking about this height if water was there how would it how would have it been look like so this is 1.15 meter then it is always uh, promotes water to the downward direction and there will be a waiting time of 3 to 12 hours for water undergo partial purification by sedimentation and oxidation so there will be 3 to 12 hours the water will be there 3 to 12 hours for actual a good purification uh, if good purification to happen so what happens in the sand is the sedimentation and mechanical straining the supernatant water act as a settling reservoir and uh, settleable particles sink to the sand surface this part then mechanical straining particles too big to pass through the gap between the sand grains are retained so it will be retained here so this filter is known as biological because there will be a formation of slimy gelatinous layer over the sand bed which contains algae, bacteria and atoms and that is known as zooglial, vital or schmutzteke layer or biological layer. So that is the part which actually does the filtration. There is no chemical uh, we are adding, we are just using biological action of this uh, water and sand reaction. So we you know we uh, keep a sand uh, in a water for a while. There will be algae formation over the top layer of sand. The same principle is applied for here for the purification of water. So this is known as heart of the slow sand filter. So there will be a formation of white layer if we keep water for a period of time. So these particles will be retained by this biological layer which removes organic matter and holds back bacteria and also oxidizes ammoniacal nitrogen into nitrates so this is the vital part or the most important part in slow sand filter or the biological sand filter so the filtration and storage is most vital part in slow sand filter so storage is not very important in rapid sand filter so I'll explain you. So this is known as Schmutzdecke or vital layer or biological layer. So there will be under drainage system. So which is very uh, shorter that is 0.15 meter. It is always at the bottom of filter bed. So this is under drainage system. So through this the water drained and goes to the central supply. There will be porous pipe which I shown just now and rate of filtration is 0.1 to 0.4 there will be walls to regulate the flow of water we can control the outlet of water after the purification then we need to do the filter cleaning that is that was i was showing this picture this is a filter cleaning process okay so in slow sand filters filter cleaning is done by a process known as scraping so we know what is scraping so we scrape off the top layer once it becomes useless okay so filter cleaning if the bed resistance is very high then we need to open the walls fully drain the water then scrape the top portion of sand up to two centimeter depth then we need to replace it so after three to four years new filter bed is constructed so this picture you can see this is after three to four years of usage we remove this two, two to three centimeter of top layer then we keep a new layer for the next usage so advantages is very effective it is the most uh, effective compared to the rapid sand and simple to construct there is no chemical action there is no need of um, uh, energy or uh, electrical or other forms of energy we need to just wait uh, for the purification process construction is basically cheaper but it requires very large area next we see the rapid sand filters so that is the most commonly used and there are two types it started in USA 1885 gravity or open 
type and close type pressure type Patterson and Cantis so this is how it look like if the water is drained completely this part is a filter part so this is a structure of or a flow track for flow diagram of this uh, rapid sand filter so first there is no storage if we are storage uh, or we are taking with the raw water we need to mix it with alum or coagulant so there will be first process is rapid mixing for 30 seconds then there will be flocculation for 15 to 30 minutes then we keep it for sedimentation one to four minutes so there will be coagulant it will be settled then we send it for filtration then disinfection okay so this part is much more complicated than rapid sand sorry slow sand there there was no coagulant it was only gravity action here we act coagulant act as a first part of purification because all the particles will be coagulated because we are adding a coagulant it becomes flow after flocculation it is a slow uh, circling or slow rotation of the paddles which causes flow formation and flow will be sedimented so a part of purification is done here because we are doing it a very rapid phase we need to pump it for a very shorter period we can't wait for a very longer time we have no waiting time usually in slow sand there is three to twelve hours waiting hour here is there is no waiting hour we just wait for 15 to 30 minutes rapid mixing 30 seconds 15 minutes or 30 minutes flocculation then max one for sedimentation there it was 10 hours waiting period was there so here it is done very fastly then uh, we remove the coagulants then we send it for filtration filtration bed is same as uh, what we seen earlier only thing is it is just mechanical straining there is no biological layer formation because already most of the particles and impurities bacteria is already removed at this process so here the part of uh, filtration is done at filter table so rapid sand filter is almost uh, similar as uh, our slow sand only thing is it is uh, working at a very slow uh, sorry very shorter um, period of time and very uh, there is no need for very big land can do it uh, at a very uh, close space or a shorter space so this was the first part aeration so first part the raw water from the river or pond will be uh, done a process of aeration so it will get oxidized so the first step was coagulation so we add uh, alum to the water uh, by 5 to 40 milligram per liter so you can see this process coagulation so coagulant will be added so there will be rapid mixing uh, that is in mixing chamber violent uh, mixing will be done so this coagulant will be uh, coagulating the impurities so it becomes flux and it will be settled or sedimented so that is known as flocculation so after this rapid mixing so it will be sent to the flocculation chamber so there will be slow stirring of water by paddles maybe for 30 minutes so flocculant aluminum hydroxide what it does is it entangles all particulate suspended matter along with bacteria then it will be sedimented at the sedimentation chamber and it will be removed so that was the uh, difference between biological and rapid sand filters because this process was not there in uh, rapid sand filters so the next part was filtration okay so the first part was absent in rapid uh, slow sand the flocculation sedimentation coagulation rapid mixing flocculation was not there sedimentation was there but it was along with the filtration but here it was separate so after sedimentation we sent this water to filtration bed in slow sand it was all along in a simple chamber there the sedimentation and filtration happens 
so filtration is like filter bit uh, how we see in the slow sand uh, the difference i have a one table in next slides so there will be sand particle 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 graded uh, gravel 30 to 40 centimeter then there will be 1 to 1.5 water on the top and rate of filtration this is 5 to 15 and remaining alum flux from a slimy layer over sand bit it holds back the bacteria oxidizes organic matter so this alum flux will be there so it act as a very slimy layer over the sand bit so it act as a mm, filter unit uh, or you can say uh, similar to the biological layer but actually it is a mechanical process mechanical straining happening but still there will be a balance flow over the sand bed so the scraping process was done in slow sand filters for cleaning the bed once its efficiency is lost but the backwashing is done in rapid sand filters so what is backwashing so it is by air bubbles or water is pumped in a reverse direction from the under when flock layer becomes very thick and about 15 minutes so if the flow layer the alum flow layer over the top becomes very thick so that it holds back the water it is no longer doing the filtration what we have to do is we have to remove it so how we remove it we pump air or water mostly air uh, from underneath so that it creates pressure and the top layer will be outflowed and it removes the all of this alum fluke so it takes maybe 15 minutes but you can see the slow sand filtration we have to remove the entire big area so we need to rebuild it we need to recreate a sand but we need to put new sand and wait for uh, it become a biological layer so this is a very simple process we can do backwashing in 15 minutes so this is a cross section we already seen so advantages is the fastness it is very fast actually you can do the raw water directly there is no need of storage the filter bed occupy very less space compared to uh, the big land area which requires for the slow sand filtration is almost 40 to 50 times faster than the slow sand filter and washing of the filter is very very easy compared to the slow sand there it was scraping and lot of replacement here it is only 15 minutes of backwashing and there is more flexibility so just compare the slow and rapid sand area rapid sand very little space very large area the rate of filtration is very high 200 where it is just 2 to 3 sand size was 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 it is lesser pre treatment in rapid sand we need coagulant we need to sediment it first before treating it to filter pit but there is only sedimentation happening in the slow sand because it is totally biological action filter cleaning here we have seen backwashing through air or water here it is scraping operation we need more workers more energy more people because it requires more skill adding of uh, alum uh, operating this backwashing because it is less skilled once it starts it will go like that only thing after two to three years we need to uh, remove the sand bed or scraping of scan bed removal of color is very good in rapid it was uh, better uh, slow sand was actually better mm removal of bacteria was uh, good in slow sand compared to rapid sand this was a summary of the slow and rapid sand filters so i can just uh, show you the comparison here there is only biological layer but here you can see there is coagulant flocculation then sedimentation is there both places but this spot is not there in conventional slow sand because this is a part where the impurities are removed okay and also filtration is also there so next part is disinfection that was the last part so disinfection usually done by uh, chlorine so why we are doing disinfection uh, like uh, what are the criteria that is should not be influenced from properties of water within short time should not be toxic and color imparting 
early water importable importable means drinkable it should be available cheap and easy to use there should not be any residual concentration to deal with contamination uh, easily detectable simple techniques so uh, what chlorinations are done it kill pathogenic bacteria oxidizes ion reduces taste odor controls algae so these are the actions water and chlorine it become uh, hypochlorite and hydrochloric acid so hypochlorite it will become h plus and this ion and this ammonia is combined with chlorine so this chemical reactions uh, happen uh, when we add chlorine to the uh, water so these are the principles of chlorination water should be clear free from turbidity and we need to find out the chlorine demand that is how much chlorine is needed to destroy the bacteria or organizing uh, sorry organic uh, matter and to neutralize ammonia so free residual chlorine for a contact period of one hour we need to uh, keep and there is a break point that is a point when chlorine demand of water is met and free residual chlorine appears so if we take one liter of water we keep adding chlorine at one point of time because we keep on adding chlorine so it will get dissolved at one point of time it will start appearing because it dissolved completely the remaining portion will be uh, become residual chlorine so that point is breakpoint chlorine so principle of breakpoint chlorine is to add sufficient chlorine so that there should be a 0.5 milligram per every liter free residual chlorine should be present in water so that means uh, if it is very contaminated the breakpoint chlorination will be high if one liter water we take and we add uh, two milligram per um, liter chlorine and another very contaminated water it might require maybe five milligram per liter uh, it depends on the contamination of water okay so finally we have to decide the dose of chlorine that is chlorine demand plus free residual chlorine uh, chlorine demand is the breakpoint chlorination at the uh, amount of chlorine where this free residual chlorine appears so minimum recommended, uh, recommended concentration of free chlorine is 0.5 milligram per liter for one hour so that amount of free chlorine should be present so how to calculate it it suppose if we are taking one liter we add two lit two milligram per liter so it start uh, showing free residual chlorine so we add a 0.5 milligram per liter so it retains 0.5 milligram if it is very contaminated 5 uh, or 6 or 7 uh, it will be dissolved so we add a 0.5 milligram per liter extra so this 0.5 milligram per liter will be there for the uh, chlorination action or the disinfection so we can use it by chlorine gas chloramine or perchlorate so commonly used chlorine gas so how do we do a um, small scale water purification we can do boiling uh, chlorine tablets add in potassium permanganate so well cleaning uh, by two methods that is one adding bleaching powder so how much bleaching powder we should add then we can calculate uh, with this pi d square h by 4 this d is the diameter of the well h is the depth of the water and pi 3.14 and we can calculate it so that much amount uh, we need to add so double port method was a simple method uh, invented by neri that is national engineer environmental engineering research institute nagpur so the same institute uh, who developed our nalgonda technique for fluorine defluoridation so we keep a cylindrical board there will be two ports so one port will be inside and one port will be outside the smaller port will be this much dimension uh, that is height 28 centimeter and diameter 16 centimeter and hole at the upper portion so what we mix we keep one kilogram bleaching powder and two kilogram coarse sand and the bigger one will be having a height 30 centimeter diameter 25 centimeter all at the lower portion okay so this will be immersed uh, in the well and we keep uh, when we do disinfect of a well 
so this is repeat after every three weeks this is known as double port because it has two ports so that's all about uh, water purification the basic difference between slow and rapid sand was important in slow sand uh, there was no chemical uh, we are adding it was biologically happening with the formation of a biological layer uh, sedimentation was there and biological action so water is getting filtered but whereas in rapid sand filters there will be a chemical alum we adding we it it do it uh, does the coagulation and flocculation so flocks will be removed that was a part of filtration then again it will go to the filtration bed so that's all about um, purification of water on a large scale and a small scale the important part was uh, rapid sand and slow sand and this uh, principles of chlorination uh, like dose of chlorine how much chlorine we need to add that is chlorine demand that is uh, breakpoint chlorination the point at which the residual chlorine appears so always we should have a 0.5 milligram per liter of residual chlorine uh, per hour uh, contact time uh, for a water Mm, we should say if it is portable so this is the mechanism of portable water portable means uh, drinkable without drinkable water without any pathogens so that's all about water purification i'll come up with a new session on dentistry and more thank you